Ever wonder how your favorite celebrities live? Well, celebrity homes are notorious for larger than life ideas where the sky is the limit on what can be built, created, and installed right here at home. Now we are getting the keys and unlocking these jaw-dropping secrets inside the most incredible celebrity homes in America. I'm Andrea Belke. Come join me. This is Celebrity Homes Unlocked. Today, it's all about Nashville, and more specifically, the gorgeous Tennessee foothills just outside of town. Brad Rempel is the lead singer of country music duo sensation High Valley. Brad and his family have just finished up the build of their stunning cottage getaway, and he's invited me here to check it all out. I'm here for the whole day, so whatever Brad has in store, I'm ready. Here we are right outside of Nashville to check out Brad Rempel's beautiful cottage home. It is gorgeous. He told me that I should come ready to sweat. So I'm in my workout clothes. I'm ready to do a home tour and spend the day with him. So let's go check it out. Brad! I think he's home. There he is. What's up? How are you? Hello! Hey, I'm nice Brad. Nice to meet you, Andrea. Nice to meet you, finally. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Well, thanks for making the drive. You said you wanted a day in the life of, so I figured we were going to start, you know, working out. That's Let's kinda... do it. I'm ready. I'm ready to go work out. So I don't have much stuff here, just a jump rope and a resistance band. And okay. I figured, because when you're here hanging out, for us, it's like staycation uh -huh. or I'm riding. I'm not like, don't have a full gym out here. So I figured we'd start with like a little interval. Okay. Where we start and end with jump rope. And we'll just go for like 50 skips. Is that cool? Gosh, I'm actually terrible at jump roping. Oh, here we go. Okay. I figured getting our heart rates up would be a prime opportunity to find out a little bit more about Brad. He's constantly on the go. So there was no time to waste. Did you grow up on a farm? Yeah. When you're on the road, do you actually keep up with a workout routine? You have two options on the road, work out and eat good or eat pizza every day. Do you work out every day? Is this your everyday routine? I try to. Brad, what is one thing most people don't know about you? I'm afraid of cats. Can you do the jump rope where you uh, switch it? Like. Oh! So one of us will do air squats and the other will do these fancy things. This is a trick when you're on the road and people think you actually have muscles, but you don't. You're just on the bus right before the show. Doing, don't tell, you won't tell anybody. Though, I won't right? tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> so you can do like a few of these. Okay, I have a, what if we did a race up the hill? I love that idea. I grew up on a farm in Wisconsin where hills were the gym. After all of that jumping and squatting, it was my time to shine. I was thinking just a friendly wager, maybe like the loser has to buy dinner tonight. Okay, fair. And it has to be Mexican food. Okay, right, fair. Perfect. All right, ready? You get to call it. Set. Go. Oh, oh that's cheating. <laughs> that is you beat me. a lot. I'm buying dinner. Give me uh, like, 10 hours, no, a few minutes to catch my breath and get cleaned up and then I'll show you the, show you the whole Sounds house. Sounds good, let's do it. Brad and his wife spared no detail from design to layout, and the results are stunning. I can't wait to learn more. All right, ready for the home tour. And I got you some coffee, so that'll help you. Thank you. 
That'll help you get uh, ready. I, okay, the home is beautiful. So Thank I you. would love to ask you just about why you decided to make this home and what you had in mind when you were designing it. The main thing we had in mind was get outside. And if you can't be outside, if it's windy, which obviously today's a beautiful day, but you know, on those cold windy days, um, if it's windy or cold or even in the winter, you want to like feel like you're outside. So tons of glass, so much glass that we almost had no room to put anything in <laughs> here, but we love it. And um, yeah, it's just about indoor outdoor. That's kind of why no matter if you're in the kitchen or upstairs in the loft, you, you should be able to see the pond at all times. And I literally like stood out here so many times on my four wheeler, angling it, trying to figure out where the everything should face, you know? And, so it's just, our kids are 12 and nine and we did not want them to grow up staring at a screen and each year it was like more and more of their friends were getting phones and staring at screens and, and we decided let's spend as much time out here as we possibly can. So what was the intention behind this main room right here where you first walk in? Well, one of the main intentions was can we, because this is a small spot, you know, it's like can we actually fit a kitchen and a dining room and a living area all on this floor? And so that's how we came up with this island. We're like, man, do we really need to put another table in between here? Could this not just be the table? But it's really cool because when you first walk in, there's so much space, it's so high. Was that kind of the goal when you first started designing? The goal when we first started designing was park dirt bikes in the garage and have a little bathroom attached to it to, to shower and clean up. So it wasn't originally going to be a home? No, it was going to be a garage and I kept on Googling garage with living quarters and it was going to be a garage with a little maybe bunk bed mm -hmm. above it. So I kind of started thinking, man, wouldn't it be great if if I'm gonna dirt bike out here anyway and the kids are gonna fish, if I could write songs out here with this view, how inspiring would that be? And, and we just kind of kept adding on a little bit and now we got to this place where it, we found out, okay, this isn't just like a garage anymore, this is a straight up cottage. Yeah, and you designed all of this with your family. My wife, Rebecca, um, did together with uh, a lady named Andrea Wolf and they kind of got on the phone, did a bunch of Zoom calls, and I think it was maybe the coolest gift I could have ever given my wife because she's like, sweet, you found me a lady who speaks my language and we can just geek out over all this design stuff. I definitely had my opinion uh, big time, but they deserve most of the credit. What is your favorite piece of furniture or item in this space? I will tell you exactly what my favorite is. My favorite piece is this because not only is it like a coffee table, right? Mm -hmm. um, but check this out. If you want to help me on that oh, side, yeah. there's a handle on each side and you just lift it up. Oh, I see. Ooh, this is the perfect height for, you know, just like having a laptop and working and you have this gorgeous view. Before Brad made his way to Nashville and into the hearts of country music lovers everywhere, he actually grew up in the extreme north of Canada, where the focus was more on family and faith than on technology. I can tell he's tried to preserve a little bit of that here. I also love, and I'm guessing this was intentional, I like that there's not a TV in this space. That's very intentional. There is tic-tac-toe though. Yeah. Tic-tac-toe was like TV in 1805, so uh -huh. I'm just trying to keep it authentic. My wife is very into gold with iron ore. Yeah. Everybody asks us which color this is. It's not black and it's not blue. It's iron ore. Who, did someone think that was blue? Um, people did, yeah. People on Instagram did and still oh, really? do. Yeah. There's passionate debates about it. Speaking of passionate debates, <laughs> We were gonna go with the very neutral, like, you know, standard tile mm -hmm. in this bathroom. And we were at the store and we walked by this and thought, man, can we do that? And on a whim, we just decided to do it. And it's my favorite flooring. It's just like, you don't have to admit if you like it or not right now, because people are 50-50 on it, but I think it's pretty cool. Okay, I like it because this is obviously a new home. And so you know that this is intentionally yeah. Vintage, Old school. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of vintage, these floors 
are from a, a lumber mill, like an actual sawmill. It's Fox Hardwood out here in Leapers Fork, Tennessee. And we went and got this raw wood. It doesn't click together. It's not tongue and groove. It's literally just pieces of wood. They put them down on the floor and they sand them. You can see like the rough saw marks there. Yeah. And while we're here, he just sands it and says how much, how rustic versus clean do you want it to look? And Rebecca had these Pinterest boards showing exactly what color the floor should look. And it was like the most custom floor. And the reason we chose it was you can come from the pond with like gravel in your boots and you're not gonna mess something up. You can have a dog in here. You can't really wreck this floor. It's just like, yeah, we wanted it to feel like the more luxurious she made some of this stuff, the more rustic we wanted the floor to kind of offset it. They made the stairs, by the way, out of the same floor and they built them and it was mm -hmm. pretty cool. I'd like to say that I did that, but. Yeah, did you do any any work here? What do you mean? <laughs> did you? Yeah, definitely. I did, um, I painted right in the middle of this. Do you see that That's white? That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I yeah. Did a lot of that. Okay, I love these bunk beds. Thank you. Is that your idea? It kind of was. There's a guy named Josh Lapp who uh, helped to design the structure, this company out here called Summertown Metals, and he, I told him I wanted this recessed deck, like we wanted the deck kind of inside the roof, right? And he started looking at it and said, you could fit bunk beds on either side of that thing. And my wife and I instantly were like, that's perfect. So the boys sleep up here? Yeah, originally we were gonna have a bedroom, kind of just a loft, you know, pull out sofa or something. And this is so much cooler. And they're actually just smaller than a queen bed. So you can literally have like two people per. So you could have the world's largest sleepover up here. They're really cute. I love those. I love this space. So talk to me about the idea for this space right here. Yeah, this is where I caved and said, okay, we're gonna have a TV up here, but I still got the same coffee table that raises up. So mm -hmm. we kind of envisioned that as more of the like eating living area and this at, at night is where people are gonna chill. Mm -hmm. And then the artwork, really cool. And I love that you have it on both sides here. Once again, wanting kind of wooden features to, you know, we've got the woods and we're, we're out here on this land, but it's got kind of that silvery, golden, what do you call that color? Black mixed with cool. <laughs> um, fancy mixed with job. wood. <laughs> My favorite thing about this entire home is being up here and then seeing right through those windows as well, because you have just those gorgeous windows right there. We drove out here so many times to figure out getting over in this corner looking out that window, would we be able to see town, the hills, and the pond at the same time? And that's kind of what it's all centered around. Yeah, because this Natural. is your escape home. It is, it's my songwriting studio slash, if I ever get kicked out of the house, this is yeah. where I have to sleep, <laughs> which is a lot better than the doghouse. Yeah. And, uh, but no, it's a great, it's for our family. A lot of families go to the beach or they go on, they fly away on vacations, which we used to go to the beach a lot. But now our kids play baseball, basketball, football, two boys, two different teams, obviously different ages. We don't really have time ever when we say, let's plan a two week trip. Just how would you do that? So instead we're like, let's plan a 10 minute trip and, and we go out here, but that, that is the view that this whole house is based around. One thing that was clear right away looking around Brad's cottage was that for all the details that went into the interior space, just as much attention was paid to putting the focus on the outdoors. All right, let's check out this little patio area because the patio porch, what, uh, what, what is I it? I call it a deck, I call it a deck. patio sometimes. Okay, let's check out this deck because this is my favorite part of this entire home because Me this too. is gorgeous. Especially if it's if it's windy outside, you get a little, you can actually like pretend like it's warmer sitting out here. Have a seat. Is this all, this little woods area is yours too? Yeah, we've been building tree forts and stuff down there and this is Chuck Wicks calling me right now. Yeah? Look at that. Chuck Wicks. Your buddy. <laughs> What's up, Chuck? How about you pull up that driveway, see if your truck's got enough uh, juice to make it up that hill, all right? Chuck Wicks is not only a good friend of Brad's, but he's an incredibly talented songwriter here in Nashville. I had a feeling music would be a big part of this day with Brad. I'm no country music star, but I'm ready to see if I can whip up a chart-topping hit with these two today. 
Are we gonna write a song? We already did. I mean, we're halfway done. Yeah, it's we, on the radio right now. Literally called him on the way here. You know, I have an idea, and he's well, like, I have a better one. Before <laughs> we write the <laughs> next done. hit that I'm involved in as producer of this, yeah. uh, I do want to ask him. Producer of the song? Yeah. That's awesome. Good to know. <laughs> I do want to know about your relationship. How long have you been friends? Well, I see. I met. I met you. I think when I used to do a syndicated radio show. And, I, and I'm also an artist, but I would see you at award shows, and then yeah. we're like, hey, let's write some time. This, by, by the way, this is our first. This is the uh, first. This is our first time we've actually written. It took yeah. it took cameras to get us together. <laughs> yeah, it took you to get us together. <laughs> it did. Yeah. But no, we've six years probably, and then. Um, Been on the show quite a few times. He'd ask me amazing questions, make me laugh, make me awkward sometimes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Which now that's your job, I guess. So yeah, I guess so. Have you gone over with Brad the fact that he, like, where he grew up, there was, like, no TVs, like, nothing. This guy grew up with just the land. Well, that makes sense, though, because he didn't want a TV in this room. Yeah, he we just, just to literally yeah. talked about how I fought oh, to so not yeah, have a TV. So, yeah, we did. That's it. <laughs> That's what we talked about when we first met. It's kind of like, what did you just say? And I was like, yeah, I grew up without TV and radio. And and um, that is a huge part of getting our kids back here. Because we live on a little bit of land, but it's still a neighborhood. But I think part of why we're here, honestly, is because everybody comes to Nashville because they love country music. Or at least that's a huge part of why people come here. Tourists come to Nashville because they love country. And they've heard these songs about the dirt roads and the backwoods and the hills and the haulers and all that stuff. But they get stuck on Broadway downtown and they never see anything about what those songs were written about. And we wanted to have a spot out here that when we have friends from out of town, we can say, you know what, this is, this is what it's about. This is what Tennessee is really all about. Now that I've wrapped my head around the motivation for this cottage build and the songwriting Brad plans to do here, I'm ready to see a melody come to life. I guess I'm a music producer now. All right, should we write some music? Yeah, we she should. says it so like it's so yeah. simple. Yeah. Hey, write a hit song. Because <laughs> I'm doing um, nothing. <laughs> actually, he, well, tell me about what is your songwriting process? I mean, this is the first time you two have gotten together. So I don't like this though, right? It actually, as we're all sitting here and we get our guitars out, this is actually how it happens in a co-write. You know, Brad sat down and he's like, "Man, I, I've been working on this melody. I kind of like it." And he was starting to play it. And he starts singing it, and it normally. The big question is, is like, what do you start with? Do you start with the lyrics? Do you start with a melody? Do you start with a guitar lick? And it, I want to say, for most, it starts with how Brad sat down and play what you were playing for, and you're just yeah, it was, no words. It's no always, words. And my kids hate me because I'll be like trying to learn a recording, and they're like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's just a cool melody." They're like, it "Doesn't sound cool." Yeah, these aren't sound like Charlie Brown. <laughs> I was like, "Dude." But he had actual words. So then I was like, oh, I like that. And so I said, do it again. I go, yeah, someday I'm gonna take in the sunsets, take all the time on the rolling legs. Yeah, or no, now I'll be like, oh, do it again. Oh, someday I'm gonna take on the sunsets, take in time on to pass me down from the grandpa kind of rollers yeah, and, then I, and then I said shoot I just wrote a song called Sunday last week and that's often how it goes it's oh. like oh man if I wrote because we write I don't know how many you write a week but quite often mm -hmm. you get these weeks where you're just writing and writing and writing and trying to as much as I like to be old school the iPhone is a bit of a lifesaver because mm -hmm. you're writing out every idea and, and keeping it and Wait, yeah, but that yeah. sounds really good. No, we are actually, we're actually going to write this song and yeah. finish it for sure. Yeah, yeah. but okay, yeah, but you can't write someday because you already have that. I mean, yeah, we. Well, we I mean, gotta, you could change it to like yeah. if we like the way that sounds. I'd be like, someday. all right, maybe we just do. Yes, yeah, some say you oh, should cool. take in the sun. I love some say. Some say. But what, what do you say? Like some say this and some say that. But what do you? But I but I but then maybe the hook is like. But I say I'm gonna hold on to you in the front porch swing on a Saturday night, taking on the home you can't get it right. Yeah, I actually just, just got like, goosebumps because I like that. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> You know? So do, uh, I'm gonna record, so gonna record this. Some say take this all in, but I say all I need is you. You know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I liked the little uh, 
Last thing you did. Um, yeah. Keep it. Did you already forget it? Yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold, hold on to you. But front I say porch. I'm just gonna hold on to you. On the front porch, swing while I'm kissing your hands. Getting on, they say, baby, yeah, I'm your Yeah, I'm uh, on the front porch, swing while I'm holding your hand. Maybe then I'll sink on an old kitchen dancing around, baby. Talking about babies. Oh, yeah. and I hey, say, saying you're my baby, talking about babies. Yeah, that's saying cool. You're my baby. Next thing you know, I want to say, I'm just going to hold on to you. Da -da -da -da. Son said, baby, just about as good as kitchen it dance, gets. Too. Yeah, son's kitchen dance is slow. Talking about his cut, say you're my baby, talking about babies. See, this is what we do. We just talk until something rhymes. Sometimes it's like two hours. Wait a minute, what did you just say? Do you have any lyrics from the past that now you cringe at? When I first started writing, I just wrote down lyrics, like I wrote poems, you know, because I didn't really know the guitar too well. So I remember it being super like, I need you, like rhyming you with you and you and you and all that stuff. <laughs> it's a close rhyme. I need you, I want you because you're the best and I love you. Like that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, you try to forget about those. <laughs> yeah. But that's like the beauty of songwriting is yeah. in a nutshell, you're always trying to find a different way to say I love you. Because everyone says I love you. Yeah. And they know what it means, but how can you say it differently? Mm -hmm. So say, let's start at the place where you go. And I just wanna hold on. Yes, so say, I just wanna hold on to you on the front porch swing while I'm joining with you. Does the love get mom better? Gotta be and never beats better. That's where the crowd goes. <laughs> Remember that, man, better. <laughs> all right, we gotta go. <laughs> well done, my man. Thank you. Yeah, After all the songwriting hype about Tennessee sunsets, I can happily report it did not disappoint. The day with Brad was winding down, but I still had more questions for him. I've always found there's no better place to get to the heart of things than around a campfire. Before I leave, because I'm sure you're trying to kick me out at this point, I do want to know, in your life up to this point, what are you most proud of? Wow. Whew. I mean, obviously, the correct answer and the right answer is I'm most proud of my family. My, the two boys that my wife and I have, where I'm so proud to be their dad and to be her husband. But in my career, what I'm the most proud of would be when a mom comes through the autograph line with her family, maybe her like teenage daughter or her young son, and says, thank you so much for making music that my family can listen to together in the car, or thanks for making a show that we could take the kids to. That, I guess because music was such a big part of my childhood, that's what makes me the most proud as an entertainer. Nice. Okay, so you've accomplished a lot in your life, but what is the one thing you would tell your younger self? Maybe yourself 10 years ago. That would be a lot younger. <laughs> Man, what would I tell myself 10 years ago? I probably would have, I know this is kind of stereotypical, but I would have said to try and enjoy all the amazing moments and not always think about the next one. And not to pat myself on the back, but I do think I've, I've tried pretty stinking hard to do that, but I'd still remind myself of that to do it even more because, you know, everything that started our career was exciting everything in the middle you know the future is exciting it's all exciting but it's so hard to chill and just enjoy it which is literally why why we're here why we built this place is like a little bit of a reset a little bit of a slow down and say this is how we grew up in the middle of nowhere how about we try it? Thank you so much for having me over today, for showing me this wonderful place. I had a blast. Well, so did I, and I think you you did a great job of just kind of like living a day in the life of Brad Rempel, which was it as glamorous as it seems? Did it seem glamorous? I think it was just kind of like hard work and good songwriting, or what it was. Did you say? It was cool. 
writing a song. You did a great job. Yeah, I'm writing. now officially a songwriter. Absolutely, I got, got a certificate for you that mm -hmm. you'll get in the mail. Thank you. Uh, worked out. Ran up the hill, hardcore. Yes. I was a close second. <laughs> I just want to have that on record. Um, what else did we do? Wrote a song, had some breakfast. That was good. Mm, really that coffee, good yeah. Protein shake. Um, saw the sunset and the sunrise all in one day. It happens every it day, by the way. It does. So. We ran, we sang, and I got to see Brad's gorgeous and newly furnished cottage. What an incredible day here in Tennessee. I may have to come back soon for more songwriting and sunsets. Until next time. You're afraid of cats? Petrified. All now right. let's make some s'mores. Well, you didn't bring any, oh, so. Oh, shoot. Oh, cat! Was that good?